The Cohen Plan U D2 is a follow-up to their D1, or D, I suppose, which came out three years ago. Now the D2 adds balanced output, battery life's a little bit worse, a lot more power from it, and you know what? As I proved last week in my RMA results, it does a lot better both pushing headphones into load as well as unloaded. And in fact, it's truly a high-res player by any definition of the word. It surpasses the limits of 16-bit dithered information, so it's 24-bit. And it plays your DSD files, and it plays your FLAX, it plays your AAC files without specifically saying it does. So Cohen, please update your firmware or your product list that says nothing about AAC files at all. Anyway, let's take a look at the Cohen Plenu D2. The D2 comes in this box. It's a good box. Now there's a little bit of foam on the inside. Everything else that's in this box is essentially just a bit of literature as well as a USB cable, USB micro. No one should be using USB micro in current year plus four as we know. That's one mistake they've done, and I don't think it's too big of one. One thing I didn't like about the original D was the fact that it hissed almost as much as products that came out 20 years prior. One of them is Sony's MZR55 mini disc recorder. Their super tiny first gen compact mini disc recorder. Got four hours of battery life, it's pretty bad. And it hissed, not too much. It hissed a lot less than previous generations, less certainly than MZR50. But it hissed enough, and if you have good headphones, you're really going to be bothered by it. And the D, from 2016, 18 years later, hisses almost as much. The D did not output as much power as it really should. In fact, there wasn't much more power than a typical iPhone 4 or iPhone 5. And yet it was labeled high res, and yet it was a music only player. How could they mess that up? Well, the brand new D2 is powerful. In fact, it's as powerful as Onkyo's DPS-1, which is a powerful little player, and a very good measuring player, and a hissless player. The D2 does not hiss, with the singular exception of perhaps the Shure SE846. You can plug in any earphone on the planet and it is not going to hiss. That is how damn good the Plenu D2 is. Cohen advertised the Plenu D2 as capable of playing back for 45 hours. Now, I didn't get that many hours tested in a long, continuous queue of the same album playing over and over and over, FLAC or MP3. In fact, the best I've gotten was around 33. However, we're getting over 30 hours of battery life, at worst, high 20s. It gets double the battery life of the DPS-1. It gets way more than double the battery life of the AK380. Yes, I am comparing the Plenu D2 to a $3,500 AK player. Loaded or unloaded, the Plen U D2 cleaves to a neutral frequency response better than the AK380. To that, it adds better noise performance, better dynamic range, lower total harmonic distortion, lower IMD and noise, and better stereo crosstalk. In fact, I've never tested a DAP that measures as well as the Cohen Plen U D2. And not only does it test good, it sounds good. It's got a neutral, slightly bright sound. If you want to warm it up, there are plenty of jet effects that you can add, a good parametric EQ. It nails gapless sometimes, and sometimes does not. So there are some pluses and minuses here. But overall, it is a great music player. The Cohen Plenu D2 can support almost any file that you want to send its way. Just like the original D, you insert your micro SD card face rather than butt up. Now a lot of DAPs still put the butt up, and I don't know why. It's harder to put in that way, because you don't have a little grip to pull out the proper way that your hand is already curled. Companies that make it easier to put the card in or take out are doing something almost as a charity to the rest of humanity. So thank you very much. The list of cons for the D2 are short, but they are real, and they all stem from the fact that the D2 is essentially an upgraded D. The D had great battery life, decent sound, lots of hiss. It was a good player. The D2 is better in every single way, audibly. However, it is much the same when it comes to operating. It has the same horrible GUI where if you want to get to your settings, you have to first play a song. So there's not a separate settings menu from the playback menu. Inevitably, the Cohen Plenu D will be compared to higher end players. It's got great sound. It's got a good EQ. It's got great battery life. It's solid. It's pocketable. It's got balanced. It does a lot of things really well, but its screen is horrible. In fact, its screen is the same horrible screen that was in the original Plenu D. Even if you like browsing albums through your horrible Plenu D2 screen, you're not going to like 
the speed with which they load. Scroll down, scroll up. It doesn't go smooth up and down like that. It goes chop, 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 chop. It's like using a device made in 2005 that's running a software from 2020, which is strange because the Plan U D2 is not a slow player. In fact, if you load it side by side with a D, it loads faster. It will read from the SD card faster and it will get to playing screen faster. On the original Plan U, the volume scale went up to 100 and on the new one, it goes to 150. Yeah, sure, the new one's more powerful than the old one, but gosh golly, that 150 does not have to represent the power differential between the two. 100 volume steps is enough. It doesn't matter how powerful the thing is. It's enough for the human ear to adapt to. And no one's going to listen to the highest volume of this thing anyway through earphones. And maybe not even through headphones. It's that powerful. And while I'm on the subject, I love the fact that the Plenu D and the Plenu D2 keep with the volume rocker. Oftentimes, players that rely on volume scrolling wheels end up using a full screen GUI to indicate where the volume is. So you can use your finger to go all the way up from zero to 60 or 160 or whatever it is and back down. But then it means that you lose navigation for anything else in that moment. For a lot of these volume scrolling players, in fact, you'll accidentally brush the volume wheel and what happens? Well, the entire screen is then dedicated to volume. Now you may be able to change this in firmware or some other setting, I don't know. But the point of the fact is that you can accidentally brush it and then the screen will go completely to control the volume. What I don't like about the volume rockers is sometimes they're harder to press. And let's be honest, they're slower to use. But it's not like you need to ramp up your volume up and down, up and down instantly. No, you can do it incrementally and you can do it reliably. Do I think the Cohen Plan UD2 is worth it? Well, of course I do. It's small, has good battery life. It's powerful, has balanced, has single-ended output, has a great EQ, has BB effects. You can tune the sound to almost any way you want. It doesn't hiss. It tests better than most DAPs, if not all current DAPs on the market. In some ways, I find it easier to use than Onkyo's DPS-1, which again has been my reference DAP for some years now. And you know what? It's got a number of handling advantages over something like the SPM-1000 from Aston Kern. Again, a multi-thousand dollar high-end DAP. In my written reviews, I bifurcate the good and the bad between two categories. Homage for good and porridge for bad. And then I tally them at the end. This player got five homage and three porridge. But I don't really explain it. And I don't really want to explain things because I figure you can figure it out already in the review. That's preamble to say. If I had to give the Cohen Plan UD2 an homage or porridge rating, I would give it an homage. In fact, I would give it an emphatic homage. The thing is, as a music player, you want this primarily to play music really well, which the D2 does. But it's getting through the skin and the UI, the bad screen, the slow, laggy behavior of the UI, and everything like that, that makes the user experience poor. But it comes with my full recommendations if all you want or care about is sound quality, format support, power, low noise, and all the goodies that really require you to be an audiophile first and a music lover second. See you later.